This really is a case study about how we can explore... I feel like I've done a bit of a, 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 a Paula here in that it's not really just about Libra graphics, but um, I suppose it's a tactical approach of working with free software, Libra graphics, and open educational processes. It feels like the, um, the uh, educators meeting that we kind of have as part of LGM is one of the rare spaces for like free software educators and really rich environment to sort of share exchange. So really this is, it's in the spirit of exchanging some tips and tricks for creating a bit of space for ourselves in, uh, in, this, in this context. It's the context of uh, a faculty of education. So EdLab is a new project. Um, uh, it's based in the Faculty of Education in Manchester Metropolitan University. And it's, yeah, really a, a kind of experimental project to bring together different approaches to innovation in, in education. So I want to give you a bit of an overview of that and um, explore some of the... I'm going to do it like we know everything. A lot of the time, we, we, you know, we, we problematize um, everything, and things are complicated, but I'm going to imagine we, that we solved all the problems, and I'm just letting you know how we've solved them, and it's, and it's all great. So that's not strictly the case, but we'll do that. Uh, so the backstory um, for the whole project, well, my story is as a kind of community-based educator coming from um, campaigning and activism and community work and involving a lot of free software within that. Really the, the um, philosophical side of it is, is one, uh, but also the, the practicalities of, of um, using like, recycled computer equipment and not having to pay for licenses is also very important as well. Um, so, but I'm also I'm looking for like paid work. Like, so I, I was at these meetings, I'd often be at meetings and I, I was the only person there around the table not getting paid by a university and that wasn't really working out for me. But, but so, you know, because I'd be there just as like, you know, exploring things, I'm happy here to explore, but, um, you know, a regular income is, is pretty good too. So um, this way, of, but I don't want to kind of be teaching a curriculum that someone else has planned, right? I kind of, I value the, the co-production um, and the kind of participatory approach of, of community working. So I found a home, um, and I think it's also worthwhile situating it geographically as well. So the new MMU campus, Manchester Metropolitan uh, Campus for um, the Faculty of Education, is in Hume. Now this is what Hume looked like in kind of early 1990s, and that's actually where the new campus is built. Um, it doesn't look like that anymore. It's a very like, kind of flashy, modern um, like, uh, university institution. But when I, was at, uh, when I was at University of Manchester, this was what was at Hume. And believe it or not, this was a very creative educational environment. Uh, it, was, it was a very kind of chaotic, squatted, um, chaos Berlin style um, environment. But it, um, it was also a very creative artistic community with like a lot of musicians and artists there and campaigners and a lot of people using that space to really invent new ways of doing stuff. A lot of new music came out of there. There's incredible artist collectives. So like Dogs of Heaven turned these whole areas into like huge like Viking ships. They like drove like cars off the roofs as part of their performance. And like they, you know, like like parties would happen there after the clubs, and like you know, people were innovative. They're like, this isn't big enough. They'd like knock through a wall to kind of make the, the space bigger. So there's there's a real spirit of uh, DIY innovation in Hume um, that seemed like with this new campus coming, we needed to kind of get in there. So this is kind of part of the story as well. Uh, so EdLab situated there and in terms of how it came about it came about through um, uh, my boss Mark Peace being dissatisfied with the curriculum 
uh, the kind of set curriculum approach and really thinking that for people who are going into education, it's doing them a great disservice not to, to kind of just, just go with that and just go, look, yeah, it's all about um, teaching to standards. It's all about fitting in with like, what's happening. Um, it's all about three-part lesson plans. And so th this is kind of his, his approach, is to um, have more of that kind of hacker space, co-generated approach, but within the institution. So how do you make that happen in institutions? Well, like, the way he's aligned it is, is pretty much three ways. The first one is that students need this experience. Uh, it's a kind of experience that employers value, the idea of like, generating uh, materials, of, of making things happen. This kind of idea of defining what enterprise means within, what does that mean in education? Well, I think it means making links to, well, our definition, uh, it's basically, it's open to define yourself because no one has a definition. We kind of, this is what the definition is. It's going to work with community partners to kind of co-generate new educational experiences. And just to do that involving um, practices that are kind of emerging. And really, we can really look at the free software and kind of open source community as a good model for that. And we can, in some ways, leverage the cultural influence that Silicon Valley culture has in order to kind of be a bit of a carrot and stick to the uh, institutions that we work with and saying, look, if you don't want to be irrelevant in 10 years' time, we need to embrace these new ways of working. Um, so it's that kind of saying this is good for the students, um, it's about innovation, and it's about, um, what was the other one? Yeah, community engagement. So it's about co-creating stuff with our community. So just to give a whistle-stop tour of some of our activity streams, um, part of it is about interdisciplinarity. It's like, let's take people from one faculty, another faculty, let's work with science, let's work with humanities, do science and poetry, kind of mash those up together. Uh, let's do lots of stuff around maps, mapping and situating yourself within the city. Uh, lots of stuff on walking tours. Um, also stuff around playing with technology, Arduinos, Scratch, Makey Makeys, making that very accessible. Uh, the tinkering methodologies and kind of how do we prepare people to be comfortable in a kind of tinkering um, approach. And then also this linking back to community activism. How, how do we spark change? How do we kind of use um, DIY video approaches, self-publishing? Um, I'm going to skip through these methods because I think they'll be quite familiar to you. Focus on participation, collaboration, agile design methods in a very simplified way and co-generation. Um, and look more at some of the specific interventions that we've done. Um, I'm going to skip through those as well. We've got kind of different levels. A challenge is kind of very early intervention. A creative space invites a partner in to set a challenge. And a project is more of a kind of a design project, like you might have a graphic design brief that students then meet, need to meet with the partners. So what we found out, well, we found out that we can incorporate a lot of um, free software approaches and kind of methodologies quite easily by saying that this is the right tool for working with communities and working ag across different partnerships without any opposition. It's almost like we're kind of going underneath the radar. We found that the use of um, Libra Graphics tools and uh, kind of gaming assets are a great kind of resource to draw upon to visually stimulate creativity, not just in creating educational resources, but also just to kind of um, evaluate what we're doing as well. Um, there's also the idea of, like, let's get around all of these issues about what software we can use on the system by just buying low-cost laptops, putting Linux on them, and having all of our own software in these quite portable kits that we can take um, anywhere in the university, but also out and about. And let's not call them computers. Let's call it recycling equipment to get around like, the procure procurement strategy. Um, they're not computers, they're just recycled bits that we use to teach the value of recycling. Um, 
just happen to run Linux on them. Um, also, we've learned that people love hacking hardware. They love taking stuff apart. They love breaking it. And we can use design methodology uh, and can teach um, engineering concepts by breaking stuff apart. Um, we've learned that um, kind of people actually are happy to use open uh, educational resources and happy to contribute back especially if they see the value very directly in, into what, what they're creating. And um, acoustic ecology is a very fun thing to do. It's the idea of like, what are the sounds, what sounds do everyday objects make. Let's connect up these contact piezo mics and let's make lots of raucous noise and let's kind of explore the science of what's happening there. These are just a few, a few case studies really. Um, bringing in DIY video making techniques from the world of video activism into a kind of, a kind of educational resource production and evaluation is a lot of fun. Uh, it's a good way of really getting, get, getting things working. Here are some of the piezo mics as well. And it's this idea that if you can create hands-on tinkering environments, you can get students' ex experience of an educational environment and kind of facilitating education without a lot of preparatory work. They don't need to know the ins and outs of everything because they're um, exploring things along with the, the, the other participants. We work a lot with home education groups and home educated kids just because it's a really flexible environment. We can send out a, a message and we can have uh, it's a they've got really good networks. So you can have like 30 home ed educators next week just to try out an experiment. And the fact that we're all learning together is a really valuable and powerful message for education students to have. Um, and it's also good to have that at the beginning of their journey as well. So to kind of like recap it a little bit, this year has been a test bed with the Faculty of Education, people who are already planning to be educators. But we're offering the EdLab module, which is the idea of um, designing three or four educational interventions and writing them up as a report as a university-wide module so that anyone can take that module. <coughs> so if, if they're doing a completely different course, but they're interested in being an educator or, or just interested in education, that they can, um, they can, they can do this module as well. And... Um, I, I think this is like something, it's something that we're going to write up into like a how to do an ed lab um, floss manual. Um, and I think this is a real, a real tactic. You know, we can, we can actually kind of use um, this approach for other institutions to kind of really like liberate a lot of our practices and just do it in the name of like experimenting with, with education. But it's, I, I hope you can see it's got a lot of like uh, potential for for lots of different disciplines. Um, all right, I'll just um, the, the website is edlab.org.uk, and I'll just put that up there, just so you can check it out and, and get in contact. I'd be really happy to to work in partnership with you guys.